the last episode, we removed the old pond, set up a new one, and built a photography hide. In today's episode, I'll be starting to add wildlife habitat to try to attract as many animals as possible before my first day of photography at the pond. The first step was tilling and raking out all the grass from around the pond to plant a native wildflower meadow. is about nine hours of tilling and raking. Started at around 9 a.m. this morning. It's about six o'clock now, haven't really stopped. I'm just trying to get as much grass and as many roots as possible out of here so that when I put a little bit more sand and I put the seeds, nothing's really gonna compete with the wildflowers, I'm hoping, but grass is quite prolific. So I'm sure it's gonna pop up in some places, which is fine. Just as long as it's predominantly meadow and wildflowers, I'll be happy. I spent over two days prepping the area around the pond and just as I was getting ready to see the wildflower meadow, the weather had a different plan. Well, I definitely won't be seeding today. Just when you think spring is well on its way and the weather's getting better and better, winter always has that last breath, that last push for more winter. And I think this might be the day. Whatever, I'll move on to, uh, to some other stuff. Right, so I just finished putting two buckets of mud. The reason I'm putting these in here is because I'm hoping that barn swallows, robins, there's wasps and bees that use mud to fill their nests and make their nests. So I'm hoping that they'll come here and utilize this resource. When I'm adding wildlife habitat, I'm trying to put it in two or three different places at least, just because I never really know where it's gonna work. So hopefully having one in the back corner here and then one closer to the blind over there should be different enough that wildlife can choose whichever one they like better. And is it raining now? Oh, it's hail. Um, yeah, so what's up next is that I'm going to go prune and transplant the whole shrub area to the side over here. Okay, so these are the three species that I ended up going with for the small tree and shrub area. First one up is Pussy Willow, Salix Discolor. This one, as you can see, produces a really nice flower and it's actually one of the first things that starts flowering. So insects coming out for the first time after a long winter, definitely take advantage of that tree. Next up is Red Osier Dogwood, Cornus Cerecia. This is, well, it's just really nice with the red twigs, but also it produces a nice cluster of white berries. Eventually when it's gonna grow and produce fruit, birds will be attracted to this one. And lastly, Red Elderberry, Sambucus Rasmosa. This one also produces really beautiful berries and it is a bird magnet when it starts fruiting. 
The nice thing about these trees and shrubs is that they're very easy to plant. All you have to do is make a small hole in the ground and stick in the cuttings. I was able to plant over 30 cuttings in around 20 minutes to really fill out this shrub area. Once the snow melted, we had a couple of days of rain and the first visitor to the pond showed up. Eastern Phoebes are one of the earlier migrants to arrive in the area and this one perched all around the pond to hunt for insects and invertebrates. Hopefully this is a good sign of things to come for the springtime. The next habitat I wanted to set up was a couple of brush piles, and this is a great way to instantly build shelter and cover for the birds. Luckily we're not in an area that gets very dry, so there's not really any risk of fire, but if you do want to set these up for yourself, that is something to definitely take into consideration. Within the first hour of setting them up, I already had a song sparrow using the top of the brush pile as its singing perch. Two days later, other species started using them as cover, including one of the most secretive birds in the area, the brown thrasher. Brown thrashers love skulking in thicker brush, and building these brush piles not only attracts them, but it also gives them a potential nesting site. They're really high on my list of species that I would love to photograph and film around the pond, so hopefully they stick around. The plan with this log is to make an insect hotel, so species like mason bees can grab the mud directly from the pond and lay their eggs inside of these holes. I wanted to try out this design since it's free, all you need is a log and to drill some holes. However, I noticed that it doesn't have much protection against predators, more specifically woodpeckers. I've seen a downy woodpecker already checking it out, so if this insect hotel turns into a woodpecker buffet, I may build another one with a bit more protection. Next up was to add a few logs and perches. These are just placeholders for the moment. I won't know how many perches I'll want and where I'll want them until I'm actually sitting in the blind and I start filming the wildlife. I made sure to add one perch specifically going directly above the deep end. When I put in a few minnows and when the frogs show up, I'm hoping this becomes a kingfisher perch. So I think I'm able to start sowing the wildflower meadow. This is what the ground looked like after about two and a half days of just tilling and raking continuously. And it's really not perfect. To get all the roots out, I would have definitely needed some type of heavy machinery to just scrape off the whole layer. But I can't keep tilling and raking because I just don't have enough sand to fill this back in. But 
it'll have to do. It might not be as clean of a meadow as I thought it would be, but even 50% meadow and 50% grass is still better than 100% grass. And I also had a bit of a change of plans with this back area over here. This is where the old pond used to be. When I was filling it back in, I found a bunch of these bulbs. Those are Jerusalem artichoke bulbs. And if you remember in my fall pond video, I mentioned there was one plant that grew about seven feet tall in the first season. That was a Jerusalem artichoke. It's a native plant here. It grows this beautiful sunflower on the top and that's actually what the goldfinch were feeding on. And the bulbs were what the skunks were eating. But whenever these bulbs hit the ground, if it's touching the soil like that, this will become a plant. And then this little one, that'll become a plant. This one, this will become a plant. I could turn this into 10, 15, 20 plants if I wanted to, if I cut small pieces. So the thing is throughout this whole area over here, there's, I counted at least 50 to 100 bulbs. So instead of doing a full meadow in this area, what I'm thinking of doing is only seeding it about 50% with the native wildflower seeds. And then the other 50% I'll fill in with two types of sunflowers and purple coneflowers. This whole back area is almost gonna be like a seed hot spot so all the seed eating birds are going to come here and hopefully feast throughout the season on the different seeds and then back here like i mentioned in the last video will be kind of like the thicker forest slash food forest for the birds all right so this is the native wildflower seed mix that i'll be using there's 18 species in here a mix of annuals and perennials i don't remember them all off the top of my head but i'll put them on the screen and this will be the base for the whole meadow so tomorrow we should be getting about 10 to 15 millimeters of rain and that should soak these into the ground and hopefully get them a good starting point. I also chose four species to use along the edge of the pond. Marsh marigolds, bottle gentians, blue flag irises, and blue vervain. I then seeded the sunflower patch, added some eastern red columbine for the hummingbirds, and some milkweed for the monarch butterflies. While doing this, I noticed a ton of insects on the pussy willow cuttings that I planted in the shrub area around the pond. The next thing I wanted to do was to start planting the trees in the back area. I had this idea last year with the other pond, so I already planted a couple dozen eastern white cedars, two yoxidin talus, when these grow out, they'll provide food for the wildlife, but more importantly, they'll provide cover 365 days a year. The other species I planted was Larix laricina, tamarack. This is my favorite conifer. They're actually a deciduous conifer. Their needles will turn from this bright green to a golden yellow in fall. And unlike other conifers, they'll lose their needles during the winter time. Right now, the first needles and the young purple cones are starting to come out, which is giving the tree a lot more character than during the winter time. So those are the two species that I put in last year that'll be the start of the forest back here. There's also some rust typhina, staghorn sumac back here. Sumac is really a survival food. It's not really preferred by a lot of wildlife, but if they need that extra energy, especially late in winter, that's when they'll usually start consuming that. So that's great to have. I mean, you don't obviously want to have just a whole area of sumac, but just to have a patch of it where the wildlife can eat it if they need it, perfect. I spent the rest of the afternoon collecting five species to add to this food forest. Here's what I've collected so far this afternoon. On the left here, we have Viburnum triloba, highbush cranberry. From this one branch, I can make four cuts and get four plants out of that. Red osier dogwood, Cornus sericea. That's the same one that I put next to the pond and I wanna put it back here as well. I'm gonna leave the branches very long though. So when I put them in, it's gonna give some substance to the area back here, but also it'll make them more visible when the grass grows. Then we have choke cherries, Prunus virginiana. These ones produce these nice berries, a great attractant for birds. Canada plum, Prunus nigra. This one is going to be pretty interesting. I think when I put them together, I'm going to put them a little bit closer than I usually would just to create a nice thicket. And on the right here is kind of the one exception in terms of native plants. This is just cherry trees. So when I did the videos last year with the wax wings eating the cherries, I just really enjoyed that and I thought it'd be cool to have that back here. And this is really just a starting point throughout the season, I'll add more species of trees and shrubs, but I'm excited to just get it started and start filling up this back area. With a lot of the habitat in place, now it's just a matter of tweaking things to my liking and the wildlife's liking. I'll continue to update and upgrade habitat throughout the season, but I'm hoping the work I've put in so far is a good starting point to give all the wildlife in the area a better home. 
Stay tuned for the next episode where I get down on the ground for my first days of wildlife photography around the pond.